Out of your bed, out of your, out of your shampoo, out of your, out of your rivers of living water, out of your, out of your oh yeah, living water. Welcome to the Men of Integrity, men that rescue men and women. As always, we're delighted that you've joined us for a journey through the Word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. It is the Word of God that is a light unto your path and a lamp unto your feet. I suggest to you tonight that if you embrace the Word of God, you will experience the joy, the peace, and the righteousness that is found in the Holy Spirit. I want to take this opportunity to thank you for tuning in. Thank those of you that join us in the marketplace and tell us how relevant this service has been to you and how the Word of God is really blessing you. And I want to take a special opportunity to invite you to the Pentecostal celebration this Sunday, 10.30 a.m., the River's Main Sanctuary, and at four o'clock Sunday afternoon, amen, at the main sanctuary, 508 North Gray Street, Colleen, Texas, we'll be celebrating, amen, the birth of the church, 30 AD, when the Holy Ghost first fell on the day of Pentecost, amen. It is a date and time that's been set aside to give God glory for the church. The church is God's idea. It is the gateway, glory to God, from heaven to earth. Amen, is the church. Remember what the word says, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So join us Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. and at four o'clock this Sunday, amen, for a life-changing experience. Tonight I wanna to talk to you from the book of John, chapter three, and I wanna read for you verses five through seven. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. The God's first assignment to man is to develop a spiritual relationship with him. There is so much chaos and confusion in the world. But in order to overcome these things, the first order, the first step, go to God, is to adhere to the word of God. Victory over the world starts with peace with God. You must reconcile with God, amen. That's why the writer says we must be born again. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So reconciliation with God through a spiritual experience is the requirement, amen, to win. So the first word that God deals with as it relates to us overcoming and having peace with God is change. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things are passed away and behold, all things become New. Now, you know what that represents. It represents a new mind, a new heart, a new attitude. David said in the 51st division of Psalms, creating me a clean heart and renewing me a right spirit. It is having the right attitude towards God. Amen. It, it is having a heart that has been cultivated, glory to God, nourished to where now you love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. The old heart can't do it. The Bible says that it is desperately wicked. Glory to God. In Revelations 21 and 7, he gives us the second word that we have to deal with. Not only must we deal with change, but we must overcome. He that overcome it shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. There it is, the spiritual relationship. 
God being God and we being sons of God. But there are some things which we must overcome. We must overcome the mentality of the world. Amen. The mentality of the world causes us to act and react a certain way. It gives us a certain ideology about things. But God says that he is the way. He is the truth and he is the life. So we must overcome that mentality and embrace the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The third word that you have to come to terms with is steadfast. 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. This can only be accomplished by being born again. So being born again says that I must change. I must overcome and I must be steadfast in the things of God. If it's total obedience to God, you're going to be blessed. Amen. Total obedience to God, you will have no lack. Praise be to God who always causes us to triumph. Glory to God. Amen. When we triumph, that means that we win every situation, every scenario. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 50, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither do it corruption inherit incorruption. That's that born again experience. Glory to God. Where we are no longer bound, glory to God, by corrupt minds. The Bible says, cleanse yourself of all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit. Flesh and blood cannot enter. It cannot inherit the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but is joy, peace, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. So in the flesh and blood, without a spiritual cleansing and a spiritual transformation, how do you enjoy peace and love and righteousness? Glory to God. It cannot be done outside of the Holy Ghost. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14, the person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. My brothers and sisters, everyone is looking for peace. Everyone wants to have a man tranquility and serenity, but it cannot be found from the fleshly perspective. It can only be found spiritually because it is the spiritual man that is converted and finds trust and comfort in God, which brings him eternal peace. Satan wants to keep us in a position where we are always wrestling, where we're always struggling, where we're always scuffling, glory to God. But God says, I want you to have peace. This peace I give unto you, not as the world give it. So when you stop and look at 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. The enemy does not want you to see that this is a dead end. He does not want you to see that you can never prosper in this. He doesn't want you to see that this will always bring aggravation, frustration, and irritation. So he blinds your mind so that you will not believe that there is a God and that he loves you unconditionally and that what he wants from you is not to control you because he gave you free will, but he wants you to make the right choice. He says, I set before you life and death. I set before you blessings and curse. And then he turns around and says, choose life. But the enemy has blinded our minds so that we cannot see what truth is. And so we go and we live on temporary relief. We, we live on glory to God, temporary reprieve. But what God wants to do is give you everlasting life. Remember what the psalmist wrote. 
I will show you the path of life. You cannot find the path of life on your own. Glory to God. He says, but I will show you the path of life. And in the presence of the Lord, there is the fullness of joy, what you've been looking for. And he says, and at his right hand, there are pledges forevermore. You will always find joy, peace, glory to God, confidence in Jesus Christ. But it requires you to be born again. Does that mean that you won't have trouble? No, but it means that in the midst of your trouble, amen, God will give you peace. In the midst of your trouble, God will give you joy. So what happens now? We have to seek repentance. Repentance in Christianity is the act of seeking forgiveness. Forgiveness from God because we know that we have sinned against God. And knowing how sinful our words or actions or way of life has been, there is a sincere remorse over it, which then motivates us to seek forgiveness from God through prayer. If a man does not understand the love of God, does not embrace the price that was paid at Calvary, then he probably will never be able to see the forgiveness of sin. In Acts chapter 3 and verse 19, here is what the record says. Repent and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. God wants to refresh you. He wants to give you a new beginning. He wants to lift that burden. He wants to give you new insight. He wants to put you on the path that is successful and prosperous according to the word of God. You remember what John wrote. He says, it's beloved. It is my will that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prosper. God wants your soul to prosper. How does your soul prosper? you become a man close to God, the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Joel chapter two and verse 13, rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending Calamity. Now, you have to understand something here because you hear a lot of rhetoric that God wants to destroy you and God is mad with you and all this stuff. God is not mad with you. Amen. God is standing, waiting on your repentant cry. Amen. God knows, glory to God, that we have been bamboozled and deceived, but he stands with grace and mercy to embrace us. The Bible says, come boldly to the throne of grace and let your request be made known unto God with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. God says, I want to hear what it is that you desire. You desire to be free, but freedom is only found in the born again experience. You desire to be delivered, but deliverance is only found in the born again experience. You want joy, peace, and prosperity, but it is only found in the born again experience because all that is of the flesh is the lust of the eyes, the lust, glory to God, amen, and the pride of life. So if you want to break that scenario and you want to get out of the lust of the eyes, the lust of the world, the pride of life, then you have to have the born again experience. And I know there are so many versions of the born again experience, but if you look in the word of God and you follow the path that Jesus laid, he will let you know that repentance and confession and water baptism and indwelling of the Holy Ghost is the born again experience. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 15 and 16, the record says this to you. But as he which had called you is holy, be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Well, to be holy requires the born again experience. And Galatians chapter five and verse 16, this I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh is what brings division between God and ourselves. 
Amen. The, the lust, amen, always has us chasing after things that God says, touch not, takes not, handle not. There is no good thing God will withhold from us if we walk upright before him. All good and perfect gifts come from above, from the Father of lights. So he says, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's a born again requirement. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 1, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So there is a promise. Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the thoughts that I have towards you, thoughts of good and not of evil to bring unto you an expected end. These are the promises of God. There are so many promises that God has spoken to you. He says, listen, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will never fail you. Glory to God. He says, all of your needs I shall supply according to my riches and glory. He says, I'm your healer. I'm your deliverer. I'm your way maker. So many promises of God. He says, I will save you and your household. He will deliver your sons and your daughters, your spouses, your siblings, your parents. All of these are promises. But he says, having therefore these promises, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit. That's the born again experience. You cannot get around being born again. Amen. Water baptism is for the remission and the removal of sin. It is an outward expression of an inward transformation. He says, perfecting holiness in the fear of God, perfecting your ways, amen, becoming like God, having a respect for God, having respect for his principles and his concepts and precepts. So in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 25, Paul tells the Galatians that the fruit of the Spirit is love. The first thing that you learn as a born-again believer is that you have to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. The person that you love, you spend time with. The person that you love, you try your best to please them. Glory to God. And then he says, there is joy and there is peace. So much chaos. I want to get away from all this negativity. I want to get away from all of this chaos. Glory to God. It's only found in the spirit. Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness. Self-control, that's a powerful thing right there, glory to God, to have self-control, to be able to say no to the enemy, to be able to say no to yourself, amen, to be able to have the patience to walk it out with God. Against such, there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and its desires, meaning that you have put to death all of those things that opposes the will of God. Don't you want to be pleasing with God? When you look around and you see how chaotic this world has become, when you look around and see, glory to God, amen, that the enemy seems to be on a never-ending rampage, you know that your safety and your peace can only be found under the blood of Jesus Christ, covered by the love of God. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another and envying one another. All of this is done before we start trying to do the work of God. So many people try to do the work of God and, and, and we want to be preachers and we want to be teachers and we want to be anointed and we want to do all of these things without first yielding ourselves to God's assignment. What is God's assignment? That we first come to peace with him. That requires us to start living the life of God. You have to understand what God wants. You have to understand the purpose behind 
God's gospel, the purpose behind the kingdom of God in Luke 19 and 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save those which are lost. He says, listen, I understand that you're confused. I understand, glory to God, there's so many uncertainties in your life. I understand that it seems like it's a never ending battle, but I come to find you. Aren't you glad that God found you? Amen. And if he has not found you, glory to God, and man, if you just lift your hands and wave your hands and begin to cry and call on the name of Jesus Christ, you will summons him to your presence. He says, I come to seek and to save those which are lost. Amen. And when God finds you in Acts 1 and 8, here's what he says, and you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. What does that mean in 2024? He says, I'm going to give you power, glory to God, to overcome power, glory to God, to be steadfast, power to change. Amen. And you're going to be a witness unto me, glory to God, that the whole world, your siblings, your friends, glory to God, your co-workers will know that there is a God because the Holy Ghost gives you power to do what no other power can do. The Holy Ghost gives you power, amen, to maintain your integrity. The Holy Ghost gives you power to forgive. The Holy Ghost gives you power to love. The Holy Ghost gives you power to overcome, to be resilient. Those that are without the Holy Ghost, you find them breaking up and fainting in their mind and giving up as though they have no hope. But when you are full of God's spirit, and walking according to God's word, you know that you have the hope of glory abiding within you, knowing that God will never fail you, knowing that God will always be there, amen, to deliver you. Praise be to God who always causes us to triumph. In Matthew chapter five, verses 13 to 14, here is what we look like. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is therefore good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that sit upon a hill cannot be hid. God has made you light to light up. Amen. Glory to God. He wants you to light up and illuminate and give revelation that he's alive, give revelation that he, a man has the power to give revelation, glory to God, that he is beckoning and summoning for his people. He says, you're salt. You're going to change the atmosphere. You're going to change the flavor. Glory to God. Amen. You're going to add something to that's what we do when we're born again. That's what we do when we are walking with God, when we're living by the word of God, we make a difference. People can now have hope because they see God operating in us. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 4, no man that ward entangled himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. You stay out of the negativity and you let the love of God shine. Amen. You stay away from the confusion, glory to God, and you demonstrate the love, the peace, and the righteousness of God. And this is how your family says, I want what you have. Your friends say, I want what you have, because it seems like nothing moves you. Why? Because you are rooted and grounded in the truth. You're rooted and grounded in God's love. Amen. And nothing by any means shall hurt you because the power of God, the word of God is not in your mouth. You can choose not to be offended and you will not be. Why do you expect a sinner to do the things that are not in their nature? They're liars. They hurt people. They do things, glory to God, amen, to make people feel bad. But in Romans 8 and 5, they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit do mind the things of the spirit. So to do the will of God, here is what you got to understand. Psalms 143 and 10. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on level ground. 
Psalms 37 and 3. Trust in the Lord and do good, and so shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. That will, you will have no lack. God will always give you wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. It's not you that have to bring it to pass. It's God that will bring it to pass. You just have to stand in the divine authority and power of God. In Matthew 5 and 44, but I say unto you, love your enemy, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. My brothers and sisters, in John 15 and 16, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he shall give it to you. How is all of this done? Matthew 22, 37, Jesus said unto them, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul and with all thy mind. So God says to you, amen, in a nutshell, if you're going to be victorious, you're going to have to be at peace with me. And I need you to change. I need you to overcome. And I need you to be steadfast in the things of God. I want to take this opportunity to let you know that God is real. And every promise that God has spoken is real. And it's not too late. You may go in, but you're coming out. If you fall down, he has given you the power to get up. But you must do something about your situation because the promise of God is still available. And if it doesn't work out like you expected it to, you're still going to be victorious. God loves you, glory to God, and he is beckoning for you to come out of the darkness into the marvelous light. It's imperative that you get back under the word of God. I want to take this opportunity to invite you again to the Rivers of Living Waters ministry where every service really is a life-changing experience. Every Sunday at 1030, every Wednesday, 630 for prayer, 7 o'clock for a journey through the word of God. You need to hear a word that will transform your mind, that will increase your faith, and that will give you the power to stand in a perverse generation. Special service this Sunday at 1030 and at 4 o'clock. It's the Pentecostal experience where we are celebrating the birth of the church. It's not too late for you to receive your miracle. It's your time. It's your turn. It's your season to be blessed. God is true to his word. He has promised to save you and your household. So join me, glory to God, this week for a life-changing experience, and you will be so glad you did. We are the men of integrity, and we are praying for your miracle. Out of your bed, out of your, out of your.